KNOC Radio. It is the Hard Rockology Show. That was some brand new music by a band out of the UK called Knock Out Kane. And I am proud to welcome to the show lead vocalist Dean Fox. Dean, welcome to the show. Uh, hi, how you doing? Okay. Very good, very good. How is it there? Two in the morning? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just gone two o'clock. Well, half past two in the morning here, and uh, I've been uh, I've been at one of our local pubs for a while, so there's been a few drinks flowing. But I think I, I think I'm on top of it. I'm all right. Great, great. Go well, ahead, Matt. Well, that's what we want to hear. I mean, we, we'd hate to have you staying at home waiting for us to call you. So we're glad you made it to the pub over there. So, oh yeah. So uh, what, what's the what's the local brew over there that you're drinking? Say, say that again. I said, what's the local brew over there that you're drinking at the pub? Well, I'm a, I, I, I'm a spirit drinker myself. It's, it's, it's got to be vodka or, or, or Jack Daniels for me, really, to be completely fair. All right, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're not doing the gin and tonics and stuff over there, huh? I'm not drinking gin? Gin and tonic, that's an old man's drink. No, 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 I'm not an old man drink. It's a great drink when it's blazing hot out. <laughs> Mother's Ruin, that's what we call it here. What do you call it over there? Mother's Ruin. Okay, Mother's Ruin. Okay, that's great. So you're drinking Mother's Ruin every day now instead of gin and tonics. That's right. So thanks, thanks for that info, Dean. I'll use that on him all the time. I see him drinking one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so any... i tell you what I've got in front of me now. Right in front of me right now, I'm, I'm, I've got a, a very large drink of uh, the Greek spirit Uzo. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. And we're just drinking water here. I feel left out. Well, the beer's on their way. The beer's on the way? Yeah, the beer's on the way. Okay. So we'll be drinking some uh, some brew in a couple. But uh, you know what, Dean? I, I just want to let, let everybody know. Uh, I came across your album before it even came out over here in the States, and uh, I, I was just blown away by the album. And I, I know I've been corresponding back and forth with you guys in a band trying to get you guys on the show. So I'm glad that we finally had uh, the opportunity to get you guys on the show and promote this album because I think it's one of the best albums for 2012. And uh, it definitely needs to get out there, and people need to hear this album. Well, I say thank you very much for, for, for that. I mean, uh, we, we, we're proud. Of, we're proud of what we've come out with. It's taken uh, it's taken us a year to record the album, you know, and in, in several different um, uh, sessions that we did at the studio that we did it at, and um, uh, we, we, we were in no no hurry to we were in no hurry to create our first album and not be good. Um, so. It's, it's taken a while to do it, but we've, we're very proud of what's come out at the end of the at the end of the day. And uh, it's, it's one of those things that it's a it, it's one of my favourite pieces of music now. And I, I don't feel I don't feel egotistical to say that at all. You know, I mean, I listen to it all the, all the time, and um, uh, along with, uh, with with many other records that I listen to at the moment. But I'm so proud of it that I do listen to it a lot. And uh, and uh, we've. Uh, you know, we spent a lot of time on it, and uh, and it it's, uh, it, it really has uh, it really has come out exactly the way. In fact, it's exceeded all our expectations. You know, I'm currently holding the CD in my hand, and I love the packaging. The way you guys have it packaged, a lot of great pictures, and the thing I like the best about it is I can read the lyrics because so many CDs now that come out, I can't even read the lyrics. It's a great packaging, lots of pictures of the band, lots of info on it. And I highly recommend, like my brother Matt here does, to check it out. The music obviously is what you're buying it for, but when you come with the, when it comes with a book like this, it's it's really a good package. Very well done. Very well done. Well, thank you very much. It, it, it's one of those it's one of those things that um, uh, it, it's like um, we, I myself, and uh, every single member of the band, we're all we're all fans of uh, I mean, massive fans of uh, of rock music and music in general, and and I think. Um, when it came down to actually um, uh, creating the record, and when we got when we got the record company on, on, involved and stuff, and they said, "What do you want to do with it?" We said, "We said we, we actually want something that someone can hold in their hand and like flick through the booklet and and get a, a, a get a grasp and get an idea of what the band's all about, and they can read the lyrics to the songs and they can they can read the the, the, the blurb at the back of the of the album. You know, the greatest albums in the world, the ones that you really cherish, the ones from years ago and stuff." There were always lots of thank yous and lots of this, that, and the other, and you kind of felt like you knew the band as soon as you read that stuff, you know, uh, because because it was kind of in depth. And we wanted to do the same thing, and and I, you don't get that a lot of it, a lot of the time these days, you know, people kind of cut corners and stuff. But our record company were very good. They said, yeah, okay, let's let, let's do that, let's go with that, and we, we you know we're really happy with it, you know. Yeah, that's uh, dust off the records, right? Is that the record label? Yeah. 
Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I'm impressed. I mean, I, I buy a lot of CDs just for that, that one reason. I want the booklet. I want to flip through there. I want to hear the thank yous and, and, and what the band's thinking. And, and they did a really, really good job with this particular release. So, uh, Yeah, because like I, like I mentioned a minute ago, it's like you can put the CD on and you can flip through the booklet and you can actually see the lyrics of the songs and you see all the pictures of the band and... Like like Dean just mentioned, you kind of like like you have a personal relationship with them somewhat as you're li listening to it. Whereas nowadays, a lot of people just download a song here and there; they don't even know what the band looks like. So it kind of takes that away from the way you used to listen to records back in the '60s, '70s, and into even parts of the '80s and '90s. Well, you felt that back in, I suppose back in the day, even to even up to sort of like the '80s and the early '90s and stuff. I think that you could get a record, and then after once you, once you've got the first album, second album, whatever, and once you've read everything and you've seen everything, you you, you did feel like you had a personal relationship with the band. You felt like you, you 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 knew them a little better than you did before just by listening to the music, and I think that's really important. And it's it's one of the things you know with like digital downloads and stuff, which are, you know I'm, I'm 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 into that. I'm down with that whole thing because it does it does um, it does create a market for for, for, for bands that. that, that, that you know they can get the music out there without actually having a record label or or whatever i understand that but it is great when you can actually get yourself um to a point where you can read the stuff and you can get and you know and the, and then an extension of that would be the next time you see them in the magazine do an interview then you get a little bit more and then a little bit more and a little bit more and then maybe you'll see them on tv a little bit more and it, 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 it's important for, 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 for uh, fans of the music to, 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 to have that kind of relationship, I think. I really do, because I'm a fan of the music, you know, and I like, I, I like to, to have that in, in the bands that I listen to. So I'm, I, I hope that we can, we, we, we can do that, you know, for, 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 for people that are going to get into our stuff. So what's the name of the band mean? Where did you come up with the name of the band? The name of the band? This is, this is a weird one. People, people are, when we explain this to people, people think that it's... A, it's a, I'm going to have to make this really clear. Um, when the band was first formed a few years ago, I wanted to call the band Cocaine as a metaphor, not, not as a... a, con, a you know, not, not as a, as a, like a... I don't want to condone people taking drugs and stuff like this or whatever. Um, what, it, was, it was all as a metaphor. You know, so, so cocaine as a metaphor, instead of getting high on drugs, get high on music, get high on the band, get high on rock and roll, yeah? Um, and then we looked into, uh, we looked into it and uh, we, we thought to ourselves um, that, that there's so many bands over the years, and if you Google it, you'll find it, um, that so many bands over the years have had the name cocaine. And then a very good friend of ours um, came up with, we said, well, if you want to call the band cocaine as a metaphor for getting high on, on, on music, rock and roll, whatever, um, yeah, why don't you call the band uh, K.O. Kane? K.O. as in knockout, like in boxing, and uh, Kane on the end. And then I said, well, instead of that, why don't we just call it Knockout Kane? And then anyone who looks a little bit deeper into it and actually gets it, they can get it by themselves kind of thing. But uh, that, that's what it's all about. It's, it, it's all about using music as a high. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. Well, one of the things that I noticed about the album, and, and I've played this album probably a hundred times or more, and from the first track to the last track, the album flows, and it's just got a great flow to the album, and it's just a feel-good party. And I mean, it's just a feel-good party album. And when I say that, I, I'm going back. I feel like I'm going back to when I was in high school and when I was hitting the uh, the bar scene and, and and going to concerts and stuff. And the music that was out at that particular time it was all about partying, sex, drugs, rock and roll, having a good time, and and you know. It, a lot of the t a lot of the music in the '90s got away from that a little bit, and starting to come back now, and in, in, in the past couple of years and stuff. And when I put this album in, it basically brought all that stuff back to me, and and in a way that the album is is reminiscent of those albums from the the the, the late '80s, early '90s, but it's got a modern sound to it, which really I think knocks the album over the top. And that's the one thing I was drawn to this album. I just think this album is a complete album from start to finish. Well, that's, uh, I, 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 I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad you, I'm, I'm glad you said that because, I mean, for us, it's exactly the same thing. I mean, a lot of our influences. We, I mean, we draw influences from many, many different places, and uh, but, but, but our biggest influence uh, when it comes to writing the songs that we write would be, uh, would be the, uh, would be the rock bands of the early '80s through to the early '90s. Um, I mean, of course, we're, we're influenced by a lot of British bands. 
Uh, but, uh, but, but, but we're influenced uh, massively by a lot of American bands, you know, uh, the bands like, uh, you know, Early Guns N' Roses and uh, uh, Motley Crue, and I mean, that's a given. Uh, but even even the, 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 the real quality bands that were in, the, the, that, were in that genre, are, you know, d during the 80s and early 90s, bands like Warrant, great, I mean, great songwriters, uh, bands like Steelheart, great musicians, um, uh, the, 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 Stuff, stuff like that, it, 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 that is the iron bar, it's the iron girder, it's the support, it's the support that, uh, that, that, that keeps our music where it is. And then there's other influences that come in as well, because we're, we're all into like country music and stuff. So when you hear the harmonies, the vocal harmonies on the album, you might be, you might be reminded of, some, of, of something that, um, that, that, that maybe Steve Earle or maybe Tom Petty um, would, have, would have done because of big influences again. And uh, even even a, 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 recent, a more recent American band that we that every single got, every single member of our band that are really really into a uh, little big town bands like that you know with the harmonies and stuff and they it's, I mean little big town for us a, a really big influence we love that band and um, uh, and uh, well, when it comes to the vocals we we, we, we we I think we've taken quite a lot from that and um, uh, for us uh, little big town I think would probably be. Um, it, it's like um, it, it's like in a it's like a modern version of Fleetwood Mac, but maybe slightly more country, you know. But but we love that stuff as well. And uh, if you really look deep into the music, if you really really look deep into the music, you can hear funk in there. Uh, you can hear that there's some jazz in there, and there's some uh, there, there's all sorts of stuff that we've taken from. But really, that it, we, we just died in the wool rockers, you know. When it when it comes down to it, it's ACDC and it's uh, and it's Guns and Roses and it's you know you know. Uh, and, and that's where that's where we're all really at, and that's where we feel alive, you know. Yeah, but but with those bands, like you were saying, there is the harmony, there is the tempo, there, there, all that stuff works for those bands, and that's probably why those bands are so endearing today. And I think yeah. that's what you've captured as well. And that's one of the biggest things I've always said about music. As, as I have to, I like the harmony, I like the tempo change. I, I just that's what to me draws me to the music, as well as the emotion behind the vocals and the singing and the lyrics. Plus the production on the records. Yeah, exactly. The production on the records, I mean, and the production on this particular album is phenomenal. I don't get the wall of sound on this record. Yeah. You know, which I dislike totally, especially with this kind of music. You can hear all the instruments. You can hear Jimmy Bohemian's guitar, which is outstanding. I love the tone he gets out of the guitar. And, and the rest of the band is phenomenal, too. Who's, well, the, who, who's the other members of the band? Can you just give them a shout-out? Because I don't think we mentioned it before we started talking to you. Say that again. I said we didn't mention the other band members before we started talking to you. So can you tell us a bit, little bit about them, real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. Um, uh, we, we, we have uh, we have obviously myself, Dean Fox. Um, I've been around for uh, quite a lot of years, just scooting around doing different bands, and I've had nominal success doing this, that, and the other. But uh, but nothing quite as, uh, as as special as what we're doing now in this band. And uh, and I, I, I'm grateful for being in it and, be, and for being a founding member. Um, Jim, our guitarist, um, I've known Jim now for about eight, nine years, and uh, when I met him...